Okay, so uh, I want to take maybe 10 minutes or so at the end of the uh, class. Uh, so somebody stop me in a half an hour if I uh, don't notice. But I do want to talk a little bit about this topic of whether it ever rained on Mars or not. Um, we're, we're in the section of the class where we're talking about climate and water kind of all together because it's hard to disentangle the two. We know what the climate, uh, uh, in general, we know what Mars is like today. We talked about that at the beginning of the, of the semester, the kind of Mars 101. Uh, how would you describe Mars today? Hot, cold? Hot and dry. Hot and dry? Cold and dry. Uh, okay, so Mars 101. Uh, it's colder than the Earth, substantially. Uh, don't let the red color fool you. Um, it is, there's not a lot of water around on the surface. Uh, and the atmosphere is pretty thin. There's no global magnetic field. There is solar wind and cosmic rays flooding down to the surface. Uh, not your nicest planet to live on. We have indications that we've already talked about a little bit that Mars was different in the past. And so in this section dealing with climate and water, what the important questions are, you know, how different was Mars in the past compared to what it is like today? Uh, we know it was different, but how different in what ways? Um, just a little spoiler, um, we're basically wanting to know, was Mars warm and wet in the past? Was it cold and wet in the past? Was it cold and dampish in the past? Were there episodes of when there was water around? You know, so how, how pleasant a planet was Mars in the past? And when was that? And what happened to change that to have Mars become the fixer-upper of a planet that it is today? Okay. So those are some of the main questions we're going to be looking at. And, and the change in climate and the change in what's going on with water are just, they're all bound up with each other. And so we really can't, it doesn't really make any sense to talk about climate and then water. So we're going to kind of address both of the same. And in terms of this question of how nice Mars was in the past, how different and in what way Mars was in the past. This question of did it ever rain on Mars, I think, is a good way to organize a lot of that. Because if it rained on Mars, what does that mean? You know, it doesn't rain on the moon. Jordan. It means there was water, there had to have been liquid water around. You know, right now we can't have rain on Mars because the atmosphere is too thin. We can't have liquid water on the surface even in areas where it might be warm enough because the atmosphere is so thin, any liquid water immediately boils away. So this question of did it ever rain on Mars kind of encapsulates a whole bunch of these things. Okay. If it rained on Mars, then Mars had a hydro hydrological cycle comparable to what we're familiar with on the Earth that you learn from grade school through high school about the water cycle and you know, the oceans and evaporation into the clouds and condensation and rainfall and all that stuff. So uh, the reason for this, you know, this was not a question after Mariner 4, 6, and 7, remember, because when those probes went by the planet, it looked like Mars was a dead world, very much like the moon. No one cared about what Mars was like in the past. It wasn't until Mariner 9 arrived in orbit and gave us a more complete view of the planet that some of these questions about, well, gee, maybe Mars was not the crappy planet it is today back in the past, that's when those questions came up. And it came up in response to uh, features like this that were seen in the images from orbit by Mariner 9, and then in a little bit more detail, uh, a few years later by the Viking orbiters. Uh, so I've got here just some pictures of valley networks, as, as we've talked about before. Uh, 
uh, channel, channelized structures. And what I want you to do is take a couple of minutes just jotting down in your notes what are the actual observations you can see from these images. And then we'll go to the next slide and talk about your observations and how we would interpret them. Okay, so what were some of the observations that you made? Okay, so there were, let's get a pen. There were features that looked like a valley structure. <coughs> what else did you observe? There were a few craters around it. Okay, there were some craters, so this is not, uh, not a completely new surface. Okay, so um, th yeah, th we had squiggly lines, linear features, channels, whatever you want to call them, that varied from fine channels to uh, thicker, more prominent channels. And did you notice anything about how those channels were arranged? Where were the fine channels? Where where were the thicker channels? The fine ones came off. Okay, so um, is this kind of a? Is that what you're talking about? Okay. So there's not only channels in here, but those channels are in a particular relationship. And these ones on the ends looked thinner, and the, the ones down here looked thicker. We have um, this kind of uh, branching structure. And so what interpretations can you make of these features we're looking at? Looking at this valley network structure in particular, what are the different processes that could have led to having these channels incised on the landscape? Water erosion. Okay. We'll just leave it at water erosion at now, but we can actually talk about a couple of different ways. What else might have? Have caused have carved these channels. Volcanoes. I mean, no, no, that would that wouldn't stay. Um, not volcanoes themselves, but what comes out of volcanoes? That's what I meant. Lava. lava. Okay. So yeah, we know from on Earth that lava, hot lava flowing down the side of a hill, can carve a channel. And so it's reasonable to throw on the table, well, maybe these channels were caused by lava flows, because we know that lava has flowed on Mars in the past. What other kind of erosion besides water erosion? Wind. Yeah, okay. We know Mars has been cold and dry and windy for billions of years, so wind erosion might be... Uh, um, and all of these were actually, well, there were some other hypotheses as well. Um, under certain circumstances, carbon dioxide can actually flow as a liquid, but it has to be under very high pressure. So uh, although there, there was uh, an hypothesis of uh, a carbon dioxide-controlled Mars that was called white Mar the White Mars hypothesis, that's been fairly well disproven. There are features of these channels that don't make us think that they were carved by lava or wind erosion. And so it's fairly um, clear that water was in some way responsible for these channels. Now, can you think of Well, let's just leave it at there for now. <laughs>
So here's a map of the Mississippi River drainage. Uh, what do you see? Many valley networks. Yeah, it looks very much like the valley network systems that we saw on Mars. So the I, one idea was that, well, you know, if we took the Earth and stripped all the water away, what would it look like in North America, in the United States? We would see these ancient river valleys that had been carved by water, and the water's gone away, and the valleys stay. So one interpretation of the valley network systems on Mars is that they're the same kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So under this hypothesis, what we're really talking about would be wide-scale precipitation and how does the hydrological cycle on the Earth actually cause, carve those river channels that we just looked at for the Mississippi River Basin. Rain falls from the sky, what happens to that rain? Flows down over the surface. As it does so, it erodes, it collects in small streams. Those streams gather together downstream to form larger streams, eventually form rivers. And so, uh, you know, with the kind of water cycle we've got here on the Earth, we would expect to have every drainage basin basically um, has its own kind of uh, stream beds that have been carved through the surface flow of water. Now there are other ways that the water can flow as well. Some of the water gets into the ground, into the water table underground, and flows underground, in which case it's not going to erode in the same way. But the hydrological cycle on Earth would carve the kinds of channels we would see here on Mars. So it's very um, it was very easy to jump to the conclusion that, oh, we see these valley networks on Mars, therefore Mars must have had rain at some point. There are some problems with that, however. Um, and let me just, um, you know, we know that currently the atmosphere on Mars is too thin for there to be liquid water on the surface. So for us, for, for us to suppose that there were drainage channels carved by surface erosion due to rainfall, we would have to come up with some mechanism for the atmosphere of, on Mars to be what in the past? Thicker. thicker. Okay. So is there any evidence for a thicker atmosphere? Probably a bigger problem, however, though, is what's called let's see again. Yeah, it's not gonna show up. The faint sun problem. We know from looking at other stars that stars, main sequence stars like our star, gradually get hotter and hotter over the course of their lifespan. When they start off, uh, they're mostly fusing hydrogen together to form helium, which leads to all of the radiation that the star gets off, the light, the heat, and so forth. But as stars age, a the helium builds up. Eventually, the pressures build up enough so that the helium starts fusing into carbon and oxygen and, and heavier elements. And that happens at a higher and higher temperature and higher and higher pressures. So we know that as our star ages in the future, it's going to get hotter. And it, it, extrapolating backwards, what would we expect our young sun to be like? Cooler. Cooler. Less solar output. The Earth early and Mars early in, its, in their histories would have been receiving less input from the sun. Mars is already cold now, so for Mars to have been warm enough to have liquid water in the past, you know, the question is, how can we manage that? How can we get conditions on Mars 
early in its history with a faint young sun such that it's going to be warm enough and with a dense enough atmosphere to actually support um, liquid water. One part of this is, well, maybe Mars had a thicker atmosphere with a much thicker, a much more pronounced greenhouse effect in the past. So if early Mars still had it, its primordial atmosphere, and that atmosphere was full of carbon dioxide and methane and hydrogen and some other things, then maybe it could have held in enough heat, even though the sun was wimpy at the time, to have a warm enough environment for, for there to be uh, water flowing across the surface. So these are some of the issues that, that have to be teased out for us to know. Was early Mars warm and wet? This, is, this would be a warm and wet early Mars scenario. You know, Mars somehow had environmental conditions that allowed it to maintain a warm temperature in spite of all of the things that are going wrong or working against that. And that warm temperature and thick atmosphere would have supported a water cycle like on the Earth. That's the warm, wet Mars, early Mars hypothesis. But it's not the only hypothesis. There are a lot of people who are arguing, you know, we just can't, we can't see the conditions needed to get Mars that, that warm. So maybe, maybe Mars was cool in the past. Maybe Mars was never as warm as the Earth is now. But there were still other ways that water could have acted on the landscape. So that's more the, either the cool, wet, early Mars hypothesis, or the cool, not so wet, kind of damp, Mars, early Mars hypothesis. One of the ways that a cold Mars that didn't have enough oomph to support uh, a water cycle like on the Earth could have still had channels carved is this issue of groundwater sapping. So if you, uh, if you go out to northern Arizona, and uh, look at some of the uh, areas of the landscape, you see that there are these channels that can be carved back from the edges of canyons through the actions of water working underground through the groundwater. Um, so basically, when you have water flowing underground, if it comes to a point where it breaches the surface, it, there's going to be erosion that's occurring here where the water is exiting the water table. And that erosion is going to tend to cut away at the bank of the cliffside or the gully, whichever you're talking about. And that cutting away of the bank from underneath is going to cause a successive collapse further and further up <clears throat> the water table. And so, as opposed to, you know, rainfall causing erosion to start at the top and kind of work its way down, this groundwater sapping mechanism works underground, no liquid water on the surface is needed, and it causes a, a uh, it, it eats out from underneath, causing collapse of these channels as they work their way back up the hillside. So just seeing channels on Mars that are carved by water does not mean it ever rained. Uh, you know, a, third, uh, a third hypothesis would be kind of the cold and wet. So this would be maybe cold and damp. Uh, cold and wet might mean, might uh, say that, well, we didn't have, we never had rain, but we had snow. We had liquid water snow falling on the landscape, piling up. And uh, at the bottom of that snow, the water could melt and carve channels, uh, not the way we think about the Mississippi River channel being carved, but by the action of water uh, coming, running underneath these snow banks. So this is a pretty fun fundamental question. If, if the valley networks can be explained by uh, groundwater sapping, do we have any evidence that it ever rained on Mars? And the answer is no. 
Because if those channels that we see in the orbital images can be carved by groundwater, then we have no basis for saying Mars was warm and wet with rainfall and all those fun things. So uh, when we look at a channel like this in Nurgle Vallis, that could very easily be explained by groundwater sapping. If you look at that channel, it's not very branched. It's not very arborescent like a, like a tree branching. Uh, so you could imagine that the groundwater sapping occurred, started down here at the bottom, worked its way uphill, and every now and then you get these little stubby branches. It's more difficult to explain some of these valley network systems as groundwater sapping, but they could, depending on the slope and the material that the slope is made out of, also have been caused by, by groundwater sapping. So we need some way to distinguish between the two. So this is not so new data anymore, but since it's a little over a decade old, but you know, our initial interpretations were based on relatively low resolution pictures from the Mariner 9 mission and from the Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiters. And you know, what happened in the late 90s and into the 2000s? We had all of a sudden a lot of new missions, a lot of new missions going to Mars. New orbiters like the Mars Global Surveyor, which you've read about, uh, Mars Odyssey, which I'm not sure if I've had you read that, about that yet or not, uh, Mars Express from the you know, European Space Agency. We get these new orbiters in orbit around Mars with better cameras. Better cameras mean higher resolution pictures. Higher resolution pictures mean new data that we can now use to address this issue. So uh, I won't uh, go through this in, in depth, but uh, you know, this, we basically have this debate going on. Runoff, which would mean rain, or sapping, which means no evidence for rain. Uh, up until these new orbiters arrived, the arguments were um, the, the prevailing idea was groundwater sapping. You know, just based on what we saw in the Viking and Mariner images, there wasn't clear evidence for the kind of fine scale branching that would be needed for, uh, run, for actual runoff. And so most of the investigators thought, well, you know, cold, damp Mars, groundwater sapping, not very Earth-like. So, here, for example, is uh, a site that was originally studied by Viking imagery. And you can see the channel here is uh, not very branched. It's pretty stubby. It's the kind of channel that you would uh, easily explain through uh, groundwater sapping. What happens when you get better data from the newer cameras is the picture changes. Well, here's, uh, uh, here's site number two with the old data. Again, uh, stubby, not very much branching. Um, when we compare the old data to what we can actually see with the new data, the picture becomes much more, uh, much more favorable to the idea of surface runoff. So what's on the left is the original Viking imagery of this site. Uh, and what is on the left is the kind of actual branching of the streams that could be de detected by using the higher resolution images, the camera images. And also, you see there's the MOLA elevation data superimposed on here. So that makes it much easier for researchers to identify what are the actual uh, stream beds, if they are indeed stream beds, uh, and, and they can confirm that, yes, indeed, these streams are running downhill because now we have good elevation data. And so how would you describe the, the channels on the right compared to the channel on the left? Channel on the right has a lot more little branches. A lot more finer branches, a higher branch order. Uh, you know, the tributaries have tributaries, which have tributaries. So it's the kind of pattern you would more expect from runoff. 
Same thing for this other site. It turns out that these stubby branches, these stubby unbranched channels that were identified in the Viking images are actually segments of a larger channel system that could be seen once we had better data. This is just uh, some quantification of this in the two sites that were studied. Uh, but the basic pattern is, uh, you know, with the better data, the valley networks that we could identify on Mars look very much more like what we expect from Earth-like uh, uh, stream systems. Um, much higher stream order, that is the tributaries have tributaries have tributaries, and much more dense uh, branching in the drainage basins. Uh, and so this was the beginning of a switch in the perspective. Um, now there's much more of a consensus that yes indeed there must have been surface runoff and that surface runoff could indeed have been driven by rainfall on early Mars. Uh, the same researchers did a global follow-up and uh, long story short they basically found the same thing. Everywhere that you saw stubby, uh, very unbranched systems in Viking data when you looked at it with the better data, you actually saw the rich uh, branching of the, of the streams. <clears throat> there is um, some further details we can, we can come, out, come up with, though. Uh, I mean, in addition to the question, how warm and wet was Mars in the past, the other question was, when and for how long? And so, now that we have actually identified things that really look like river systems, because they are fully branched, and they have all of this material, all, you know, all these branches coming off, this stream density and so forth, how would we know when those river systems uh, when they were produced. Well, I mean, you could base it off of the craters in the surrounding area. Actually, the craters in the channels themselves. So it's difficult because they are narrow, thin areas, but, you know, with enough hours of labor by grad students, you can actually count all of the fine craters that are actually in the channel basins themselves and tell when actually did these river systems form. And what you find is that there, they were, there were 10 major river systems that were large enough to be uh, dated through crater counting. And uh, they are, occurred over a range from about 3.8 billion years ago to about 3.6 billion years ago. So it's not like the whole Noachian era was necessarily warm and wet. We only have evidence for there being an active hydrological or water cycle during this you know, somewhat restricted time period. So there was a time in early, early Mars where we have no evidence for runoff. We have this period when Mars looks to be warm and wet. And then it's followed by a period where we no longer see any new river systems being formed. So if early Mars was warm and wet, it was only warm and wet for a specific period. I mean, this is still a period of 200 million years, so it's, you know, it's not every, it's not a massive flood at one time, but uh, we have to be a little bit more sophisticated. We can't just say, was early Mars warm and wet or not, because there are probably times when it wasn't, times when it was, and times when it wasn't again. 